I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. I'm gonna kidnap the President of the United States. I'm gonna break the out of prison. Kundalush, and welcome. My name's Wes, and this is Addicted to Adventure, your base camp to explore the treasures and mysteries of the adventure genre. Today we're talking about National Treasure, Edge of History, Episode 7. As before, there will be spoilers. I'm not going to spoil everything, but I'll spoil it enough, so you've been warned. We open with the FBI. Agent Ross is reviewing the audio recording of Jess, who can be heard telling Sadusky that she poisoned his tea, and she won't give him the antidote unless he gives her what she wants. That antidote to what the poison he just drank up <laughs> on the drive back to Baton Rouge. Jess plans to ally with Salazar against Billy to get his cooperation. As the van approaches Jess and Tasha's place, Sneaker spots the FBI who just searched their apartment and sees Jess's things, including the suitcase that she always keeps packed. Tasha uses her tech wizardry to find an arrest warrant for Jess for the murder of Peter Sadusky. They quickly leave the area. At the San Antonio courthouse, Billy is awaiting a court appearance. Seated beside her is a woman who is an Alamo history buff. What are you detained for? Me? I'm just guilty of preaching the truth. Nobody wants to hear the real history of the Alamo. I do. The two become fast friends, and Billy learns all about the original Alamo in Viesca, Mexico. In a Louisiana bar, Miles confirms that he delivered the fake recording to the FBI. He gets a notification that he's been paid 150 k in Bitcoin, but he declines the payment. As Jess, Tasha, and Sneakers are about to leave for Mexico, Jess asks Weepy the White Knight to bring Liam up to speed on the situation. I want you to go find that treasure. I'm going to lawyer up and clear your name, okay? Ethan goes to the FBI. He tells Agent Ross that he has known Jess his whole life and knows that she's innocent. Agent Ross plays the recording for him, and he catches a grammar mistake that's uncharacteristic for Jess. In the recording, Jess says further instead of farther. This convinces him that the recording is fake and that Billy must have fabricated it. After Ethan leaves, Agent Ross is notified that Billy Pierce was arrested at the Alamo. Liam returns home from the hospital to find the ransacked library. In the secret room, he finds a pink Bluetooth earbud that belongs to Jess, and he becomes concerned for her safety. Billy gets released after her court appearance and leaves the courthouse with She-Hulk, when who should appear? Hi, Agent Ross, FBI, Baton Rouge Field Office. Agent Ross and her $10 nylon holster tells Billy that she's looking for Jess, and she knows Billy has had contact. Billy spins a story about Jess approaching her for business advice, but that the arrangement didn't work out. I do hope your next lead doesn't take you even further away from home. Liam, nearly panicked, trying to find Jess, goes to the bar where they work. The boss says he hasn't seen her, and that she hasn't shown up for work for several days. He also reveals that footage of Liam performing at Graceland has gone viral on the internet and offers him a thousand bucks to perform one song for the gathered crowd. In Mexico, Jess is making preparations to visit Salazar in prison. Disculpe, ¿tienes una blusa que combina con esto? I speak English if that will be more comfortable for you. I guess I'm too Mexican for the U.S. and too American for Mexico. This right here, this is what the show is actually about. I'm not going to hammer on how much I hate politics again. But instead, let me ask you this. What does this add to the show? How does this enrich the story or move it forward? The answer, of course, is that it doesn't. You're bad and you should feel bad. Liam performs a new song written about Jess. After the song is done, he sees Miles in the crowd. He remembers seeing Miles' face when he was attacked, so Liam confronts him in the alley. Miles tells Liam that he was the one that pulled Liam out of the river. He confesses that he was working for Billy, but he now knows she's gone too far. I, I thought she'd just beat you up for the journal. I didn't think she would try to kill you. And now she's framing Jess for the murder of your grandfather. Like, my grandpa was murdered? I gotta find Jess. Let me help you find her. Forget it, man. You were the mole all along. I'd be an idiot to trust you. In Mexico, Weepy the White Knight arrives to join the rest of the crew. 
He tells Jess about the incriminating recording. Billy made a deep fake. <laughs> the writers are using words they don't understand again. A deep fake is visual, not auditory. At the FBI, Agent Ross explains to her boss, Agent Hendricks, about the grammatical error in the recording. Billy Pierce made a very specific usage error in our meeting. A further versus farther. That matches the one in the tape incriminating Valenzuela. She's British. And the British don't use farther at all? Right. Is that true? If anyone is watching from the UK, can you leave a comment and let me know if that's true or not? Agent Ross tells her boss that she believes Jess is innocent, but Agent Hendricks insists that the tape conversation is ironclad and insists that she find and arrest Jess. After Jess has heard the fake audio recording, she decides to modify her plan. Rather than allying with Salazar against Billy, she's now going to use the threat of Billy to intimidate Salazar into giving Jess information. And your plan is to blackmail this person? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. At the prison, Salazar meets with Jess and recognizes her necklace immediately. He calls her by her given name, Jessita. Soy yo, amiga. Soy tu papá. Es imposible. I am your father. That's impossible! My father died in a fire. No. Oh. Trying to get away from you. No, I get out of that fire. I'm Rafael. You're dead. Papa Salazar explains that he broke into the bank not to rob it, but to investigate the well. When he was caught, he gave Salazar as his name. He also deduces that since Jess thought she would be meeting with the real Salazar, that she must be hunting for the treasure. He proves his identity to Jess by singing the lullaby she remembers from her childhood. Rafael believes that Manuela eventually came around, told Jess about the treasure, and gave her the obsidian relic. He asks about Manuela. Jess tells him that Manuela died and becomes angry that he wasn't around for the last 20 years. He explains that he was protecting them from the real Salazar by remaining in prison, but emphasizes that the treasure represents thousands of years of heritage and is more important than anyone. My mother never mentioned the treasure, but she did tell me that you were a reckless good-for-nothing. I see that you can't give up on the treasure. You could still find it. It was my duty and now it's yours. You haven't listened to a word I've said. He says that the lapis lazuli relic was missing from the well and that the Daughters of the Plume Serpent relocated it. I've had 20 years to figure out where it was hidden. Go to the place where the first Queen of Spain met with St. Jerome and pass notes. I said, I'm done! That's enough. As Jess storms out, Raphael insists that she must finish what she started. Later, Jess fills in the rest of the crew. I blew up my life for the treasure. Just like he did. You know, maybe I should just turn myself in for a murder I didn't commit and get extradited. What's the worst that could happen? Consecutive life sentences? Well, there's nowhere to go but up after that, right? What about the treasure? That treasure ruined my life. Billy can have it. Yeah, that'll show her. I hate to perpetuate the sunken cost fallacy, but... You basically already paid the price. You torpedoed your immigration status in the U.S., what else have you got to do? Ethan manages to talk Jess into continuing the search. Ever since you found that relic in the Masonic Lodge, you've had a sense of purpose I haven't seen in you since your mom died. You were born to do this. The group sits down at a picnic table in the park and tries to decipher the clue Raphael gave to Jess. The place where the first queen of Spain and St. Jerome met and passed notes. I have to give him a lot of credit for this scene. This is a good example of how to work your way through a puzzle in a satisfying way. There are some missteps, people are throwing out ideas, some of which lead to dead ends, but it feels like they're putting in the work and it doesn't even take that long. Where has this been for the rest of the show? The group determines that the riddle refers to the intersection of two streets at a convent named after a woman, Sor Juana, who may have been a daughter of the Plumed Serpent. The group takes a tour of the convent to look for clues. They learn that most of Sor Juana's writings were burned centuries ago. However, some of her musical instruments have survived, like the pipe organ that was restored in the 70s. The tour moves on, but the crew lingers behind in the chapel to investigate the organ. There's a joke here somewhere. Sor Juana played music. Has notes. Secret societies like the Masons hid clues in plain sight. But maybe... Daughters of the Plumed Serpent hid a clue in plain sight. 
I'm sorry, what? Sneaker stands watch at the door while everyone else tries to solve the clue. They're convinced that the organ is the key to the riddle, but they also reason that no single note would reveal the secret. Instead, it must be a combination of notes, a tune known only to the daughters of the plumed serpent. Weepy suggests that it must be the lullaby that Jess's parents sang. Tasha begins playing the lullaby, and implausibly, a secret compartment is revealed in one of the organ pipes. Gee, it sure is a good thing they used the exact arrangement needed to open the secret compartment. Am I nitpicking about this? Maybe. I just find this a little bit too unlikely, a little too implausible. Jess reaches inside the compartment to find the lapis lazuli puzzle box. They're just leaving the chapel as a nun returns and confronts them. Jess tells the nun that she isn't stealing the box, but that she is a daughter of the plumed serpent. With all three puzzle boxes, they finally have access to the full map, except they have no idea how to decipher it. X totally marks the spot. X never, ever marks the spot. Weepy suggests that Jess's dad might know how to read it. In Louisiana, Liam allies with Miles to find and help Jess. You're the only chance I have to save Jess. Two days ago, I thought you were my grandpa's nurse. Now I learn you work for Billy. I think I know you pretty well. You can't be trusted. You gotta trust me, Liam. And I'm gonna need another beer. Me too. Jess returns to the prison to visit Raphael. He's brought out to the visitor area only to find that the person he sees through the glass is not Jess, but Billy, who recognizes Raphael immediately. Back outside, Jess returns to the van in a rush, telling the crew that they need to leave. What happened? I just saw Billy in the lobby. And now she's gonna see it's not Salazar, it's Rafael. Billy tried to drown Liam over a journal. If she figures out it's my father in there, she's gonna find a way to get him killed. There's only one way to stop her. I'm gonna break my father out of prison. I think this episode is a little bit better. In fact, I'd say it's probably the best one since episode three, where they pull the heist at Graceland. There's still a lot of politics shoehorned in, and they're clearly trying their damnedest to set up a love triangle between Jess, Liam, and Ethan. And, you know, that could go okay if they handled it right, I guess. But the political stuff is dead weight that should be cut free. However, there are also some high points in this episode. We got the big reveal that Jess's dad is still alive. We got some actually pretty good puzzle solving. They found the third relic. And the danger posed by Billy is starting to become really apparent. So, did I like this episode enough to raise the aggregate score? No. This episode was pretty good, but I want to see more improvement before I raise the grade. I'm going to stick with the D-plus for now. I do sincerely hope that they continue to improve, but keep in mind, we've only got three episodes left before this thing is over. Do I think they can stick the landing and still come out with an A or a B? No. Uh, I think they've done enough damage that an A or a B is pretty much not a possibility at this point. If they did everything perfectly from here on, with three episodes to go, I think they could maybe stick a C plus, but even that would be like pulling a rabbit from a hat. Tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments if you think they can stick the landing on this. Uh, as always, if you like what I'm doing here, please like and subscribe. And until next time, fortune and glory, my friends.